Right, okay, so um, this class um, is an introduction to the listening part of the test, the first test that you come through in, the, in IELTS. So um, it's just a, a broad introduction and there are several classes which follow this which deal in much more detail in all the, the different kinds of questioning that's, that's done through the test. So IELTS listening is designed to assess your ability to understand spoken English and it's the same test for all the candidates. Uh, there's a pre-recorded audio which lasts about 30 minutes and there are 40 questions that you have to answer. So those 40 questions are roughly divided equally into four sections. So each section may contain two or three linked passages of two to three minutes each. So that's two to three minutes of audio that you have to listen to. And there will be one longer passage of about five minutes. So the passages get more difficult as you progress through the test. So during the, the audio, you will hear a variety uh, of um, situations. Some will be monologues and some will be dialogues. So some obviously are just one person speaking and others are dialogues where two or more people are having a discussion. You'll hear both male and female voices and you'll also hear a variety of accents. Some will be English, Canadian, Australian, American and so on. All native English accents. And you, But the, pro the same thing applies all the way through, that you will only hear the audio script once. You only get one chance at listening to the audio script. Uh, unlike some other exams, uh, like TOEIC, where you can replay the audio. In IELTS, you have to answer the questions as you're listening. In order to answer the questions, you're given a booklet which has the questions in it, and you can write your answers in the booklet as you're listening to the test. So the questions are there, there are spaces or there are multiple choice questions in there and you can answer them in the booklet. So the first two parts of the test uh, use the kind of situations that you'd normally find yourself in when you first arrive in an English speaking country, when you need what's basically known as survival English. So these include finding your way around, following directions, giving and taking down information, and making arrangements. So typically it's, it would be uh, trying to make a booking of some kind, whether it's through an airline um, or at a through a hotel, renting a car, um, these kinds of situations that you would normally find yourself in uh, either when you arrive in a country or prior to arriving in a country. So section one is, always, uh, is also always a dialogue between two, two or more speakers. So you'll have the person um, who, the employee of the hotel or the car, car company or the airport, um, and you will find a person who's trying to make a booking. Section two is a talk uh, or some kind of information which is given by one person at a time. So it, it's effectively, it is a, it is a monologue, uh, but there may be more than one person providing the, the information. So it's not, it's not actually a discussion. Sections three and four, the topics usually concern education or training. So you'll pr and you will practice an academic environment listening. Um, so it might be somebody giving a lecture, um, and either that'll be in a in a classroom situation, or it may be somebody who's out in some uh, out in the field somewhere describing something to um, assembled people. Um, Section three is a dialogue or discussion, so that might be the classroom environment. And section four is a single voice, so that will be um, just a lecture. So the question types that you're likely to encounter in, um, in the listening, um, there's a, a, quite a wide range of question types. Um, these may include graphics, so there may be a, a diagram or um, a map or something like that where you have to complete some aspect of the map. That you're, so you're listening to information and then having to complete some blank spaces. Um, and you may have um, multiple choice questions. It's very likely that you're going to have multiple choice questions where you have to uh, make a choice between three or four, maybe five, um, given answers. Now, spelling is important. Um, so, and especially where it is clear, clear from the tape that accuracy is required. So if they spell a word, 
um, and, and that's the answer to the, to the particular question that you have, like a name or the name of a place, um, then it's very important that you do spell the word correctly. It's, I mean, that you're, you're not going to get marks if you, if you misspell the word when it's being spelled for you. Spelling and grammatical errors are only accepted on very uncommon words. So if a word comes up um, which is not spelled out for you and you make an attempt to answer the question, but you get the spelling incorrect, um, you're not necessarily going to not get any marks in that situation if it hasn't been spelled for you, if it's an unusual word. Uh, answers require only notes, letters or numbers, not complete sentences. So in the listening test, um, similar to the reading test, you are not required to give complete sentences. It's normally um, uh, filling in gaps where there's, it says uh, using no more than three words or using no more than four words. So it's going to be a half sentence or part so of the So all of the instructions that you require are on the tape. Um, so the, the, the audio that you listen to gives you very clear instructions. The question paper, the booklet that you're given, also has the instructions on it. So there should be no mistake as to uh, why, what you have to do in the question or how to answer it or any word restrictions or what is it, exactly what it is that you're required to do. All of that information is given to you. Now the most important thing about listening is that you are given time before each audio to read the questions. After each audio, you are given further time between one audio and another to check your answers. And also at the end of the test, you are given extra time to check your answers and then to transfer your answers to the, um, to the answer sheet. So you get 10 minutes at the end to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. So when you listen, when you listen to the audio, your full attention should be on the audio. Every, every word that comes out of the audio is going to be important. But you should have primed yourself by reading the questions beforehand so that you know exactly what it is that you're listening for. Um, is, it a, is it the name of something? Um, is it a, a destination? Is it a place? Is it a time? Is it some kind of value, like a, 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 new, a number? a weight, uh, a, a, an address, the number of a street, a time, uh, a, a monetary value. So those are the sorts of things you, you can tell from the questions exactly what it is that you're going to be listening for. So therefore you're, you should be able to answer accurately. It's not necessary in the listening to be able to understand every single word that's said. Uh, there, are, there are almost certainly going to be words that you don't understand in, in any given test. So you need to be able to effectively fill in those gaps yourself. So within the context of what you're listening to, is the word that you missed important or not important? Can you over understand generally within a sentence or a passage what, what they are actually talking about? Don't panic if you miss a word. Take the context as a whole. That's the important thing. Since you'll hear the information only once, it is particularly important that you prepare yourself properly before you listen and anticipate what you will hear. So the really important things that you must do, read the questions, understand the question, follow the recording, recognize the answer, and then write down the answer. So the big difference between IELTS listening test and other listening exams is that you only get to hear the audio once. So this doesn't seem like a big problem uh, when, I, when described like this um, until you finish listening to the, a, a particular audio section because then you realise that you may have missed um, a crucial element, a crucial piece, of, crucial piece of information and you need to hear it again. You don't get that opportunity in the exam. So one of the common problems that people have with the listening test is that you may predict that you need a number but you have trouble distinguishing what that number is. Um, there are certain numbers um, in English that sound very similar. So in particular, the teen numbers and the, uh, the numbers that uh, are in tens. So if you, is it 15 or 50? Is it 17 or 70? So um, if, in certain audio situations, particularly on a bad telephone conversation, if you've got a bad line when you're making a call, very often you might check, did you say 50 or 15? Was it 70 or 17? 
So you have to be very certain or, or, or particular when you're listening that you're actually writing down the correct number. So the other problem, uh, common problem, is spelling. So make sh every, you must make every effort to ensure that the words are spelled correctly. And make sure that you practice those tricky letters. When they spell a word out for you, make sure that you can tell the difference between A, E, I. So I know, I know that um, a lot of my students, when I say A, they write down E. And if I say I, they write down A. So be very sure, and O and U as well. So be sure that you know the difference between the, particularly the vowel sounds when they're spelled out. Also, um, letters like G and J can sound similar, and B and V, and P and F. So if you hear those letters, make sure you write them down correctly, because we, we know that, in, particularly here in the Philippines, that often those letters are interchangeable. So spelling is always important, even if the word is not spelled out for you. So you must know from the question, you must know what specific information you are actually listening out for. Is it a time or a place? Um, a fact or an attitude, for example. This means that you must analyze the questions in the time that you have before the audio starts uh, to find out what information you're listening for and read the instru instructions very carefully. So at this point, it's very useful uh, in the, when you're reading the questions to actually underline the important part of the question. Um, you know, and uh, so you can see what the question is, you can circle it or, or give yourself some sort of indication that you know exactly what it is that you're actually looking for. Then you can listen for key phrases and words. So don't, again, don't worry if you don't understand everything. You should try to guess the meaning from the context. Remember that you must write down your answers as you hear them. Don't wait until the end of the test having listened and identified all the correct pieces of information, don't wait until the end and then try to fill in all of the answers. As the answers come up, as they come up in the audio, you write them down immediately and move your pen to the next question so that you are ready to write down the next question or the next answer. So it, the, the worst thing that somebody can do is, in the test is to be inattentive and not to keep up with the audio. It's, it's quite common, a, quite a common mistake that you miss one answer and while you're fretting or getting anxious about the one that you missed and trying to rack your brains over it you then miss the next one and then you miss the next one because you know that you've missed the first two and these things can compound themselves so it's quite it's a common mistake is for people getting uh, over anxious during the exam and then missing maybe four or five questions in a row because they didn't keep up with the audio if you miss an answer move on the chances are that you may be able to go back and that, that bit of time that you have at the end of the test, you may be able to go back and guess the answer. But don't pause on an answer for far too long because you missed the answer. Keep moving with the audio. You have to keep moving with the audio. Everything is much easier if you have analyzed the questions beforehand. It's absolutely crucial that you answer the, that you read and analyze the questions before the, the audio starts. And at the end of the test, you have the, at, at each of the sections of the test, you have this time to check your answers. It's a fairly short amount of time, um, but it's, again, it's very important. Don't waste that time. Use the time, as it's suggested, to check your answers. You may go back and check the spelling and find that you've made a spelling mistake. Um, you may realize that, or you may, a number that you missed it may pop into your head. So go back and check your answers. Do, do what's the time that's given to you use the time you don't sit back and relax and think okay that audio's finished and i'm waiting for the next one you have a minute or whatever it is to check your answers so check your answers every single point that you gain is helping to move you towards the uh, the level that you require and sitting back and not answering questions or not not checking questions um, is throwing away marks so just to summarize uh, the things that we've talked about here so make sure that you read the questions very carefully before the audio starts it isn't necessary to understand every single word within the context do you understand overall what's being said can you can you guess uh, a particular word but don't don't panic if you don't understand a certain word 
If you don't know an answer, move on to the next question. Don't stress yourself or lose track of the audio. Um, if, because the audio, you hear it only once and it, it doesn't pause because you're panicking, so you've got to keep on. You may be able to answer that question later on or you may be able to take a guess later on. If it's multiple choice and you missed an answer, you can go back and you can just take a, a random guess. You probably have a 25% chance or a 30% chance of being correct. If you're not sure about an answer, write down something. So don't lose marks because of empty spaces. So the exam must be done in pencil. So make sure that you have a pencil and an eraser with you so that you can make corrections. So spelling is important. Make sure that your handwriting is clear. So where it's not uh, multiple choice, uh, where you're actually writing uh, no more than three words, make sure that your handwriting is clear. Where you're writing letters for the multiple choice on your answer sheet, make sure that the letters you write down are very, very clear. Don't, uh, don't lose marks because your B's look like your G's. Really make sure that, you're, that, the, that the printing is very, very clear. That there's no mistake that the examiner is going to make over, well, did they mean this letter or this letter on multiple choice? So the instructions tell you how many words you can write. No more, in no more than two letters or two words and in no more than three words. So you have to use that instruction and apply that instruction. So if it says no more than three words, you may be able to answer the, the, the question with one word, but you cannot try and answer the question with four words. Even if you've got the right information, you will not get the mark because you've used, you haven't followed the instruction, you've used four words rather than three words. So you can use less when it says no more than, you can use less, but you cannot use more than the stated number of words, whether it's two or three. So you have time at the end of each section to check your answers. Use that time. As soon as you finish a question, move on to the next section and start reading the questions to prepare you for the next part of the test. You have 10 minutes at the end, at the end to copy your answers. So make sure you copy the right answer next to the right number. So when you're completing the answer sheet, make sure you put the right answer on the right line on the sheet. Don't, don't lose uh, marks because of transcription errors when you're copying from your booklet onto your answer sheet. Make sure you put the right answer on the right line. And uh, the other thing is to do as much practice as possible before the exam um, and continue to practice as, so as, as long as possible and as close as possible to the exam. If you're months away and you're already getting very good scores, don't stop practicing. Continue to practice, even if it's once a week uh, in the final, the final couple of weeks before the exam, continue to practice this part of the test. A lot of people think that the listening test is very easy and I think it probably is the easiest of the four disciplines in the exam. But then don't forget to practice it because uh, there may be a technique that you adopt or you may pick up a, a bad habit in the time that you're not practicing. So make sure that you continue to practice at least once a week before you get to the exam. And that concludes this lesson.